It's awesome to acknowledge our, our mothers, and we're going to continue to do that this morning. And um, before I invite Janice and Tania and Elizabeth up to the stage, um, there's just a short uh, video clip. And um, I was thinking about um, some scripture which reflects, uh, well, speaks about um, the character of, um, of a wife, which I think is really appropriate for, um, for our service today. And it's found in Proverbs 31. It's the very last... Um, uh, part of scripture and in, in Proverbs. And when I read through that, I always think of um, the different parts that mums have play, played in, um, in my life and, and maybe in your life as well. And um, I'm just going to share this little video clip, but I just want you to, to follow the, the video clip through and think of those characteristics that, um, that you've experienced from, from someone special in your life, um, from your mum. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be inviting some of our mums up to the stage here and doing a bit of an interview and, um, and a time of sharing to see how the Lord has actually been working in, um, in their lives as well. So uh, I'll over to you, Apollonia. I'll let you um, get the clip going. Thank you. A wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So I'd now like to invite uh, Janice, Tanya, and uh, Elizabeth, if you can now come forward. And uh, we'll get some lights in here as well so that we're not all necessarily sitting in darkness. And uh, we'll wonder take our next part. So this morning, as we're acknowledging and sharing our journeys in life, Elizabeth, if you'd like to.
very special day for for Elizabeth, who will be uh, being baptised uh, soon. But before we, we get to that part, um, I actually just want to reflect and, and share uh, how the Lord's been working in my life, and especially for the love that I've experienced with, with my mum. Uh, she's sort of been through a lot, as, um, as a lot of mums are and, and do. And, uh, and I particularly want to think about um, when I lost my dad, so her life partner. And um, when I think of my mum at that time, I think of some of the things that were shared on that video where she um, was so, you know, self-sacrificing. She, she worked two jobs, so... And I think maybe that might have been just to keep herself busy while, you know, because we'd lost dad. And, and um, so she would wake in the morning. She would get everything organised for around the home. Um, I, I'd moved out of home at this stage. And so I, when my dad passed away, I moved back home just to spend some time and, and care for mum. But uh, she would wake early and she would head up to her, her day job. And that was at, um, in town at the, at the press, uh, one of the, the publications. She'd work a full day there. And then she'd drive back into Sockburn and she'd start another job where I worked um, at Main Freight and she'd work through till midnight. And she did this for probably seven years, I think it might have been, se- seven years, um, working two jobs. And, um, and I know that over that time she just, you know, saved and saved and saved and saved. And, um, and, um, and I think it's now that as, as she worked so, so hard, um, she's actually got a you know, a lifestyle now where she's actually quite comfortable. And, um, and I just praise God for, um, you know, for supporting her and, um, and then uh, bringing another man into her life as well so that she could have that companionship again. And so uh, um, she's since remarried and uh, been married nearly 23 years, 24 years maybe, I think it is. Um, and, uh, and so my mum's been a real blessing to me. I also want to acknowledge my wife, Hayley, um, She's also of noble character, as the video shared, and, and, and very much as um, a keeper of our household. First one up, besides after Jacoby, that is. Um, <laughs> Jacoby sort of beats it to the, to the punch nowadays. Um, but I'm just so blessed and, um, and so um, yeah, proud of, of, um, of my wife, Hayley, um, as she role models to another mum in our house, which is um, my daughter, Ella, who... <laughs> As Jacoby um, here here this morning, so uh, I just really wanted to acknowledge and um, and just share that I'm blessed. We're blessed to have, you know, to have both. Um, you know, I'm blessed to have Haley and and, um, and Ella in my life. So you may all have stories like that as well, I'm sure. But I'm also thinking that some of us, um, well, some people here m- may actually have not even met their mum. Um, some people may have lost their mum. Their mum may have passed away. And so you may be reflecting and, and um, you know, and, and reflecting on, on a great loss as well. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers, um, you know, and acknowledgement is for those that, m- that may have, um, have passed as well. So that's my part of, um, of, of, of um, how mums have Im- impacted on my life. We're now going to hear how God and, um, and how mums have, have worked through um, their lives and, um, and the juniors, I want to actually start with, uh, with Tanya. And, um, and Tanya, you know, she's uh, leading, our, you know, one of the leading hands in our, in our children's ministry and not only taking care of her own household, um, but also is, um, is, is being is in, 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 uh, supportive and, and leading and stewarding our young people here as well, Tanya. And so we'd just like to um, give you an opportunity to share how the Lord is working through you and... Um, and a little bit about um, your journey, you know, as a mum, you know, uh, yeah, share, share a little bit about how that's going for you. Okay. Um, well, when we, just to give you a brief overview of, of the children's service thing, I've been a Sabbath school leader here since I came back. Um, like four years ago um, and before that as well but we had a new vision for the children because with the red light system with the alert levels things we kind of did children's ministry online for a little while 
and then um, came up with a new idea uh, to kind of meet the requirements of the government because along with some other mums um, and other leaders, it was heavy on my heart that our children don't miss out on the opportunity to learn about God and to enjoy being in the house of God. Um, I strongly believe that the church should be a family that you feel welcome and loved and, and love going to. I loved going to church as a child. I have fantastic Christian parents, um, as does my husband. And so we've both had really good church journeys. And I really wanted the same for my own kids and the other kids at GCF. So we developed our children's service, um, which is what we're doing, um, with the aim and the plan, I suppose, to raise church leaders, not church leavers. There's a bit of a, a, a sad reality across Adventism that um, in, in the last few decades, there's been a lot of peop young people growing up and leaving, and we wanted a different future for the kids of GCF. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're doing things like um, stepping out and speaking, leading singing, leading games, making crafts, having a great time, and all the time learning about and learning how to connect with the Father God. Um, so that's a bit about the children's ministry. I just wanted to, while I'm here, acknowledge my amazing mother-in-law um, because the keeper of the house thing is, is a full-on job when you have a family of seven, five, six men, boys. <laughs> um, but my mother-in-law wa raised a wonderful man who is, uh, goes above and beyond in helping out. And so it's very much a team effort keeping our home. Um, he does just as much work as I do um, and is, uh, yeah right there alongside with all the, the parenting and everything. And so, although today is about celebrating mothers, um, I'm sure a lot of other mothers besides me feel like we could not do everything we do and the job that God's given us without the support of our husbands and the, um, the wonderful leadership they bring in our home. So, yeah. Can you share what are some of the things that you do to um, to draw closer to Jesus and how Jesus has actually been helping you as you've, you know, gone from parenting one to the six children? Five. Five, sorry. sorry that was Phil. not a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I remember um, Ezra's dedication uh, and we stood up here on this stage and we made some commitments before God with, along with Phil's parents were here, my parents were here, the church. Um, and things like that that bring you back to your values, your ideals, your plans, your hopes and desires, um, those reminders by being part of the church, is it's really good to keep you plugged in and focused, I suppose, because it can be very easy in the busyness to to lose your way um, and continuing to meet with the family of God is really important for me personally to keep me going um, and worship singing singing is a great way to get through frustrating moments and hard times and brings laughter and fun and so I often sing worship songs around the house to help me get through and connect with God awesome thank you Tanya Hey, can we just have a, a warm uh, round of applause for Tanya? Thank you, Tanya. Uh, I'd now like to go to uh, Janice, um, actually. Um, we'll get to Elizabeth uh, soon. But Janice, uh, you, again, you, you're, you're a mum. You're uh, navigating different things in life as a, as a mum, raising a, a couple of children with your husband, Ash, as well. And, um, and you're involved in various ministries, and uh, you've had a big part to play in tonight's uh, event for the Ukraine fundraiser. So, um, yeah, I'd like you to share a little bit, a bit about your journey and how you lean into the Lord for uh, helping you through. Yes, well, um, yes, yeah, so I'm Janice, and 
as, as you know, some people that don't know me. And so I'm a mum of two. I call them rug rats. <laughs> They're at the back. Um, so I had Josiah when I was 23. Can't remember. Yeah, he was born in 2014. Yeah, and it's funny because being a mum is obviously the reality is, is it is really hard work. I was a preschool teacher and um, my mum had lots of, um, I guess, foster children that she looked after. And so I always thought if I had my own children that I'd be awesome and it was going to go amazing. And at preschool, I always seemed to work with the children that were really difficult. And a lot of the teachers were, oh, wow, that's amazing how, did, how you got them to turn around their behaviour. And um, I remember one of the teachers going, oh, you do know it's, dif- it's different when you have your own children. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, mine aren't going to have TV. They're going to be really healthy and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've got I've got to have this discipline and they're gonna you know I'm gonna follow it through um and then I had my first child which I consider um when people say oh you're lucky you've only got one child I considered him two in one and so he was yeah it was really challenging to be honest being a mum I remember being in the hospital and even though I've worked with children right down to newborns um I remember being quite freaked out because I didn't feel that bond that you see in movies when you have your child and you hug them and things. I just had sort of like the birth wasn't as smooth. And so I was like, oh, it's, it's a bit abnormal. I don't feel this love. But it's just because you're a young mum and it's overwhelming. And I remember waking up after giving birth thinking, oh, no, like I can't be free now. I just got to look at th- this person, this little thing relies on me. So I can't like, you know, I can't just, if I don't want to, eat or just want to go hang out with mates, I can't now. Um, when I mean don't eat, meaning like, um, yeah, you just sometimes don't want to have your meal, you have it at a different time. But anyway, it's been challenging, I have to say, being a mum. Um, I found it different and um, my children do, you know, they're awesome and amazing and full of energy and personality, but they're also, you know, stubborn and hard work. And so I feel what Carl said I have had to draw really close to God um, for strength in my parenting as a mother and just trying to be the best mum I can. I have, I've had to rely on God. I mean, my child just like, he's amazing. He's real thoughtful and clever. And I'm, I always tell him he's a gift from God. Um, but sometimes at school and things, it can be challenging. And he's a bit like me. We just tend to attract the wrong influences. So I've had to draw close to God um, to give me strength as a mum, um, and I think relying on God to pray over your children and ask the Holy Spirit to be with them and to bless their lives and to grow them up, you know, help me as a mum and Ash as a dad to grow them up has been my biggest um, reason at the moment I've been turning to God. Um, yeah, and I just think, just briefly back to my childhood is... Um, I was, I just told Ash this actually the other day, I wasn't even thinking of Mother's Day, I was actually thinking about my mum, and I was telling Ash that I'm actually really, really grateful for my mum, because my mum, who's not here, but she um, had a really, obviously, well, yeah, you don't know, but she had a really horrific, traumatic childhood, just, I can't even, it just blows my mind, her childhood, and um, I always think, because of her childhood, she's had lots of challenges as a mother, mentally and emotionally. And I always think, I said to Ash, oh, I'm actually so amazed that through all those challenges, um, my mum always focused on giving us as best a childhood as we could. You know, I don't, you know, I obviously was a normal child that had my own issues and anger issues and stuff, but... She always made us feel loved, she cooked for us, she was just like a really, really um, home, you know, always there for us after school, and through all her trials and tribulations, she was just an amazing mum that put all her kids first, so I give honour to her, she was a faithful follower of God, as, you know, she loves God, and she, you know, she instilled that in us, she was a leader in the church, and then we're leaders in the church, and I just give massive big ups to her and her journey and trying to keep it together as a mum through her traumatic childhood, trying to, mother, uh, trying to be the best mum to us. And I thought, if mum can do it, I can do it. And, um, and I always do ring mum anyway if I need help with anything. And I just praise God for my mother 
that's helped me be um, the best mum that I can. Um, because if she can do what she did, you know, I can just be a really awesome parent to my children. I guess that's the journey I can say. Oh, and yeah, and I think I had tributes, but um, oh, also part of why I was up here with um, tonight's event um, with the Ukraine fundraiser that we have, I just also want to acknowledge all those m uh, mums around the world, refugee mums, um, especially the mums um, that are going through the war at the moment. I'd just like to acknowledge them and just, um, if we really think about those mothers going through um, these trials and tribulations, trying to protect their children, keep them safe, um, I just really have thought about them this week, thinking tonight our fundraiser is going towards and our profits are going towards um, Ukraine and going towards helping families and mums out there and fathers out there provide for their children during this really hard time. So just make sure in our hearts and our prayers that we just look at, you know, think about those mums. Um, I'm doing it, um, we're fundraising for Ukraine at the moment, but I just also think about all the mums out there that don't have the luxuries we have. And, uh, and I always say to my kids, there's parents out there and families that are in little tin houses that have just got rice for dinner and um, they're trying to do the best they can on the little they have. And I just acknowledge them. Thank you, Janice. Um, you're uh, a blessing to Garden City Fellowship. Uh, you know, you serve in various ministries and um, you're leading the way with serving with these community events as well. So can we have an acknowledgement to uh, Janice? Thank you. <laughs> now, this is uh, love to hear from Elizabeth and, uh, and some of your story and some of your journey. Uh, today, you're making a significant commitment, um, eternal commitment. And, um, and we would just like to... Um, to hear some of your um, your journey, uh, you've uh, obviously um, traversed this um, this life so far, and um, and you're at this point where you're making this commitment to uh, to give your life to Jesus. And so, we'd just like to he to hear what what have been some of those things that um, have led and drawn you to um, to make such a decision as you have. I'm going to cry now, <laughs> um, like everyone else. Um, it's what life throws at you that you start thinking about other things. I can resonate with the um, war in Ukraine because we came out as refugees and I was four years old when we came and I remember my parents working. My dad worked, my mum of course stayed at home doing the garden, um, my, we didn't, my mother didn't buy any clothes or anything. She made everything. She'd make a garment each for each member of the family, and there were five of us all together. I mean, five, <coughs> yeah, five children and the parents, and she would knit something for each one of us. Then she would also tend the garden and they grew vegetables and all sorts of things. And Dad worked, he worked the night shift. Um, so their focus was on providing food for the family because war-torn Europe was not a good place to be in. Um, my Dad's focus and my Mum's focus was the church because I grew up in the Orthodox faith. We didn't have a priest down here, but whenever the Russian Orthodox would come down, we'd walk from Linwood to Opawa to attend those services. And that was standing right through two or three hours of service. And children being children, we didn't particularly like standing still and being quiet. But... That gives you food for thought on what is important in life. When I used to sit down and think what was life all about? Was it a dream or was I real or that sort of thing? And I know my dad, because I was the naughtiest, um, would draw me aside and give me little lessons 
Mum was always busy. She was always, always either cooking or knitting or sewing or doing something. And then when I was about eight or nine, she started bringing work in from outside because she was a tailoress in both men's and women's clothing. Um, of course, my mum's example is that I've sort of taken that a wee bit where I can't just sit if I sit, I'm tired or watching TV because I can't do anything else. But it's usually cooking for someone or putting things in the freezer or whatever else. <coughs> in the meantime, I had three children, two terminally ill. And um, I remember someone saying to me, you're still going to church. How can you? And I remember saying to them, it doesn't lessen God. God is still who he is, and there's nowhere else to go. Much like Peter's answer. But we've got over that. But I have one surviving son who's just a joy with his family. I remember when he wanted to get married. And I said, Sab, being Greek, of course, he says to me, Mum, he says, you know, I want to get married and all that. I said, Sab, the only criteria I put on you is that she be a Christian. I don't care what race, where she comes from, what she's been, where she's come from. I just want her to be a Christian. And he has got a lovely Christian wife and three beautiful grandchildren. It's beautiful. Um, you don't need to say any more, Elizabeth. Um, we feel um, what you feel, and uh, it's just um, you know just to hear your your story and your journey, knowing that that naughtiness is going to be washed away. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but that's um, it's just uh, such a, a pleasure having you. You know, come to, to Garden City Fellowship and spend this time together. You know, you've been in our Sabbath school lessons, and um, you contribute to there and. Um, you know, and you've leaned into your faith, and uh, and you're here today. You know, to give your life to Jesus. So, uh, can we have a, a warm acknowledgement to, um, to to Elizabeth as well? Now, I might just invite um, Pastor Eunice, and if he can t um, please come up. I think we will have uh, stay here, ladies. A special um, prayer for um, our three mums here, but also um, for all of our mums. And I'll let uh, Pastor Eunice lead us in prayer, please. Thank you, Elder Carr. I just loved listening to all of you, and uh, it was so touching to hear your journey, Elizabeth. And today, you are continuing that journey with the Lord. And uh, I just want to pray for all the moms here. In a nutshell, you can see Tanya is helping us raise the next generation of believers here at GCF. Elizabeth is representing right here all the moms who can anytime start new beginnings. And she is starting a next chapter in her life with the Lord. And you've got uh, Janice. She has passion and heart. And today she is, uh, we have this fundraiser with her team of people. They are paying tribute to moms in Ukraine and other moms who are struggling throughout the world, so we are raising funds to help them. And there are many moms here who are helping us as a church as well. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of motherhood. If it wasn't for that, none of us will be here. But you are amazing creator, your mighty God, your loving, compassionate Father. And we just wanted to praise you that you're not just father, you are mom too. And that's a very unique concept which we can't really embrace. But you have the feelings and the emotions of father as well as mother. And as we have all our moms here, we know that you love them, you care for them. And I pray that may you bless each one of them as they continue the journey of raising their children 
and not just children, but looking after and raising their husbands. <laughs> we just want to praise you for that. We thank you, Lord, for all the moms here at GCF. We pray for the long life and good health. And we also pray for Elizabeth, who is also getting baptized today. May you bless her, for we pray.